Hey change makers, if you are starting or growing a nonprofit organization, knowing what stage of the nonprofit life cycle your organization is in can help you get a sense of the bigger picture. It can help you understand what challenges might be on the road ahead, and it can help you understand what actions you might want to be taking now to help make that journey ahead a smooth one. So that's what I want to talk about today is the nonprofit life cycle. And I'm going to talk through each of the stages of the life cycle. And for each of the stages that I'm going to talk through, I will give you some indicators that your organization might be in that stage and some tips and strategies for how to manage and navigate paving the way ahead. Welcome or welcome back. I'm Amber Melanie Smith. If we haven't met before, I'm a nonprofit founder, executive director, social entrepreneur, and social impact YouTuber, and I like myself a cup of coffee. So this will be joining me on our journey today. Um, if you uh, haven't been here before, um, check out the rest of my videos. If you are interested in making a difference in the world, starting a nonprofit or social enterprise or socially conscious business, this is the channel for you. I have lots of resources on fundraising, startups, etc. So be sure to check those out. I also have a newsletter. You can subscribe using the link below this video where I send out social impact tips and strategies, as well as sometimes funding opportunities that I come across. All right, let's jump right in. The phrase nonprofit life cycle was coined by nonprofit management expert, Dr. Susan Kenny Stevens. And the whole purpose of this model is basically what I said before, to help organizations understand what phase they're in and strategize for the road ahead. So like I said, <laughs> I'm going to be talking through each of the phases of the nonprofit life cycle below, but one thing I want you to understand is that these phases are not necessarily linear. An organization can be in one and then skip to another and then maybe go back to one that was before it. So just keep that in mind as I talk through these. Like I said before, this is a great tool to help you, not just as maybe a founder, executive director, or you know, board chair, understand what phase you're in, but also to help you empower and equip your team to um, work through that phase as well. So let's get into these phases. Number one is probably pretty obvious. That's the startup phase. This is the phase where like-minded individuals are coming together. They're inspired by solving a particular problem in the community or by a mission that they have. This is where they'd be creating their mission and vision and probably seeking their official uh, recognition as a legal entity from the IRS or whatever the official government entity is if you're not in the United States for that. In this phase, there are really three priorities that you wanna focus on. The first is really getting clear on your mission and vision. The second is establishing strong board leadership. And the third is developing a fundraising strategy. Going back to that first one, mission and vision. This is so critical. This is your why. This is why are you doing this? Why are you putting countless hours into this? What is the problem in the community that you want to solve? And you need to make sure that not only you, if you are the founder, are clear on this, but also that the rest of the people that you're gathering to participate in this startup phase are very clear on this as well and that they're very bought in. That's very critical at this stage. If you and your founding team don't understand and aren't on the same page about the mission and vision, the rest of your community won't be either. Second, that board leadership piece this is also really important. And I've talked uh, in numerous other videos about how to recruit a strong board of directors or what you should look like in, or what you should look for in a board of directors. But just to recap a little bit of that here, um, this is the team that's gonna be doing the work on the ground in the first year to maybe up to three years-ish, depending on how fast you're growing, to get the organization up and running. They're almost at this stage acting like staff. You might call them a working board. That's the term for when a board of directors is fulfilling the functions that staff might later fulfill, like marketing manager or fundraising chair, etc. So once you're clear on your mission, you really want to be clear on what are the talents and the skills you need at this early stage in the nonprofit on your board. So if your nonprofit is an education nonprofit, you want experts on education on your board. You've got to have that expertise. That's just one example. 
the third thing I talked about was a clear fundraising strategy. Now, I've talked in past videos that this is something I, as a nonprofit founder, did not actually get to right away in the startup phase, and that is one of my biggest regrets because I was so focused on just delivering the programs that I didn't think about how we were gonna pay for all of this as we were growing, and that was a mistake because it meant that our road to growth was a lot slower and harder to sustain. So thinking through your fundraising model at this early stage is critically important. You wanna be thinking about what are the most logical revenue streams for your organization and its mission, and what are the networks that you have access to now that might provide donations and support. Okay, phase two of the nonprofit life cycle is growth. There might be some overlap in the startup phase with this because of some of the things you're prioritizing during this growth phase as well. So during this growth phase, you're really focusing on strengthening the infrastructure of your organization. Um, this includes recruiting um, key volunteers, or if you are doing well enough on fundraising to hire staff, recruiting the key staff that you're gonna need at that stage. Um, and also uh, establishing and refining and evaluating your programs. So let's talk through some of those top priorities for this stage. Your three priorities at this stage are executing on your programs and evaluating how they're doing and making them better. Um, second, building infrastructure and organizational capacity so that you can be strong into the future. And third, uh, really getting good at that fundraising strategy and, and refining those financial systems. So going back to number one, programs. Programs are the vehicle through which you fulfill your mission. So if your mission is to end hunger in your city, then your program might be um, a meal service program that feeds people. So that's just a very simple example. There's a lot of nuance and, and different types of programs out there. Um, but at this stage, you are showing the community how you're actually trying to fulfill your mission. You might be testing different program models and seeing what works and seeing what the community responds to. But what's really important at this stage is to have a way of evaluating your program's success. This could be through surveys, this could be through tracking how many people participate and um, the feedback that they give you when they participate, if they report to you that the program changed their life and somehow you wanna capture this data early on. Or if you find out it's not working, there's something that's not functioning here, it's not actually making the impact you hoped it will, that's really important to know early on because you need to be able to pivot and change things up to make sure your programs are actually making the impact you want in the community. Otherwise, you can't fulfill your mission. So the second thing I mentioned was building infrastructure and organizational capacity. <clears throat> what I mean by this is it takes systems to make an organization run smoothly. And if you don't set these systems up early on, you will find yourself in a little bit of a jumbled mess later on and wishing that you had gotten organized in the beginning. These systems could look like setting up the technology uh, or the donor software to capture donor contacts and cultivate relationships, to uh, setting up accounting software to make sure that your accounting is up to date. You don't wanna mess around with not doing your accounting because you could get in trouble with the IRS if your books are not clean and up to date. So systems like that, making sure that critical policies for your organization are being developed by your board of directors and any staff uh, collaborating with them on that. Things like this, the behind the scenes stuff that's gonna make your organization really strong. The third part of this is uh, refining the fundraising strategy. In the first startup phase, you remember, we were establishing what that strategy would be. At this stage, you're actually executing on it and trying to raise money and figure out what's working and what's not. I've talked in other videos that about how the uh, there are different fundraising models that are working best for different types of nonprofits. A lot of people assume, oh, I'm a nonprofit, I'll just get grants. But actually, grants aren't the best fit for every nonprofit. It really depends. You might rely more on an earned income strategy, or maybe your nonprofit is better suited towards individual giving. These are the things you wanna be playing with and building upon as you are in the growth stage. The third stage in the nonprofit life cycle is 
established, being an established nonprofit organization. If you're an established nonprofit, this probably means that you've got your programs down. You've tested things, you know what programs are working, and you've scaled those programs to make the biggest impact possible for the resources you have available. You've got a, a good board in place, perhaps you have some staff in place, um, you have your, your basic infrastructure in place. These are all the things that you would have if you're an established organization, um, a stable funding base. So what do you do at this stage? At this stage, you're really focusing on planning for the sustainability of the organization long into the future and staying fresh and engaging the community in new ways to make sure that your organization and its mission is always top of mind for people. So at this stage, we're focusing on three things and that's strategic planning, leadership development and succession planning, and community partnerships and engagement. Going back to that first one, strategic planning is something you really should be doing regularly as an organization anyway, but this is an opportunity for you at this established phase to take the pulse of the world around you and think how it's going to be impacting your organization and its future going forward and coming up with plans to be adaptable as well as grow or scale your impact one, three, five, ten years in the future. So I've talked in another video about a SWOT analysis, that's S-W-O-T, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It's when you take a look at how your organization is doing and what's going on in the world around you and you try to predict through a brainstorming process how external and internal factors are going to impact your success going forward. This is a great tool for strategic planning, but basically you wanna be thinking through you know, you knew what your goals were in your startup phase. What should your goals be five years from now, 10 years from now? That long-term thinking. This is also an exercise that's great to do with your staff and your board of directors, because again, you wanna keep everyone really bought into the mission and the future of your organization. <clears throat> the second thing that I mentioned was leadership development and succession planning. I know as a founder early on, this was really hard to think about because you just imagine yourself as part of the organization that you started forever and ever and ever, but life changes. You never know what could happen. You know, something could happen to you. So if you want your organization to be able to thrive, even after you're gone, you got to be doing this leadership development and succession planning. What that looks like is making sure that the other people on your team have access to training and growth opportunities to create a leadership pipeline so that one of them could rise up and become um, the, the leader of the organization in the event you or whomever the leader is, uh, is not in that position anymore. Succession planning is kind of the same thing. It's creating, uh, usually in writing, a plan that outlines the steps of what the organization should do in the event the leader of the organizations could be the executive director or the founder or the board chair could be any of these positions, depending on who you view as the leader in your organization. What happens if they go away? What is your process for identifying and uh, finding their replacement, what kinds of uh, training needs to be involved, who needs to be at the table um, offering feedback on the right person for that position, etc. The third thing I mentioned for this stage in the life cycle was community partnerships and engagement. What happens at this stage is if you aren't continuously forming and building and cultivating relationships in your community and staying top of mind, your uh, brand visibility might fade, your, you know, your mission might get stale. It's really important to be always building relationships with other groups in the community, other you know, businesses, nonprofits, civic groups, individuals, etc. This also has the effect of making sure you have a feedback loop to be constantly receiving new information about how the community's needs are changing because as we learned through the pandemic and other things going on in the world, even if your organization's programs are working one year, the world could shift and you might need to take a new approach in the next year because it's what the world needs you to do. So always making sure that you're listening to 
to your community's feedback and having those strong partnerships is really important at this stage. The fourth stage in the nonprofit life cycle is the mature stage. And this is where you've got your act down. Your programs are running efficiently and effectively. You've got good infrastructure. You have a stable and diverse funding base. Things seem like they're really strong um, and looking great for you. The thing you have to look out for at this stage is uh, getting stale and getting so stuck in your ways as an organization that you are not adaptable in the event something happens and you need to be more agile. So the priorities that you want to uh, focus on at this stage are really in the spirit of staying agile. The three things that you really want to focus on in this stage are innovation and being adaptable. Uh, continuously diversifying your fundraising streams, that's always important. And third, assessing how you're doing um, and you know, staying on top of that community feedback that we talked about in the other stage. So thinking through innovation, this is really important because as I said, even if your organization stays the same, the world around you is changing. So innovation might look like, how can our organization use some of the latest technologies to take new approaches to our mission or to make us even more effective and efficient. AI is a huge topic in the nonprofit sector right now. There's a lot of dialogue happening about this very question. So things like that, trends like that, staying on top of that and understanding how these new technologies or new circumstances in the world are related and uh, to shift the context of the mission that you're working towards. Second, financial sustainability and diversification. This kind of goes along with innovation because even though you might have a stable funding base at this stage, the world's changing. You've got new generations of donors coming in who might have different giving preferences or attitudes about giving than the generations before them. So you do need to stay on top of these giving and uh, financial trends as well and be continuously thinking of new ways to diversify your funding that way. The community assessment piece is very similar to what I said in the previous section, and that is you need to have constant mechanisms to receive feedback from the community about are you meeting their needs effectively? Are there any new or improved ways you might be able to meet their needs? And how's your organization doing? How's its reputation upholding in the community? The fifth stage is going to sound really ominous and it is crossroads. This is where the organization could expand or it could decline. So at a crossroads phase in the nonprofit life cycle, the organization perhaps has faced some kind of change. It could be something bad has happened, mismanagement, loss of fundraising or loss of funds, uh, a change in leadership, um, something, something has changed to put it at a crossroads. And the organization faces a decision on how it's going to respond to that change in order to help the organization expand or send it into a period of decline. And so the most important things to focus on at this stage are your financial sustainability, your relationships with others in the community, because you know you, we all need a little help from our friends. The, these relationships are so important for getting the support you need when you need it. Um, <clears throat> and making sure that whatever you do next is in strong alignment with your organization's mission and values and culture. So that first priority that you wanna focus on in this stage is making really strategic decisions and planning really effectively. If you think that your organization is prime for uh, an expansion phase, then what this looks like is asking yourself what new opportunities are out there to collaborate, to partner, to grow our mission, to bring in new sources of revenue. How, what does expansion look like? If you think that your organization might be facing a period of decline, this could look like asking tough questions like, do we need to drop a program in order to better align with our future? Do we need to downsize? Do we need to um, even dissolve as an organization? In some cases, if an organization determines that the place the world is in at that point is a, is a place where the organization's mission isn't actually needed anymore, Dissolving is a logical response to that. 
I know, um, you know, March of Dimes, the story of March of Dimes is a great example. Um, they did not dissolve, but they achieved their original mission and then they had to decide, are we going to come up with a new mission? We've got all this infrastructure. What should we do with all this, these great resources? Or should we close our doors? And in their case, they decided to shift their mission and use their infrastructure to tackle a new problem. Financial management and sustainability, it seems to be a common theme in all of these phases, but here there's a strong focus on making sure that you are really clear on where the money's coming in from and where it's going out to. And you need this data to be really up to date and well managed so that you can be making financial projections and have a clear understanding of what is going to be possible for either an expansion or managing a decline. Um, the third part of this is stakeholder communication. So going along with the idea that you need to be having strong relationships with others in your community, that's volunteers, donors, uh, partners, other nonprofits, businesses, et cetera, anyone you're working with who's affected by your mission or the work that you do, having transparent and honest communication with them is uh, an important part of maintaining a strong relationship with them. So let them know what's going on. If you think you're in an expansion phase, ask them for their ideas. You know, what are some areas of growth or opportunity you see for us in the community? What are areas of need that maybe we might be in a great position to tap into? Or if you're in a period of decline, ask them for feedback on the sentiment of how relevant your mission is at that time, where they perceive your organization's strengths and weaknesses to be. This can really help you manage that period of decline and come out of it if that's your goal. Phase number six is turnaround or decline. This is a little bit different from the phase we just talked about because at this point you've clearly identified that your organization is in a state of decline and now you face the choice of are you going to allow it to decline or are you going to turn things around and if you decide you want to turn things around what does that look like it could involve anything from um like i i just mentioned the march of dimes example shifting your mission it could mean rebranding to you know become fresh in the eyes of community. It could be restructuring the organization to position your staff to be more effective for what you want to do next. Uh, it could mean a lot of different things. Similar to the phase we just talked about, we're focusing on being candid and honest about the situation that we are in in this phase. So a top priority is an honest assessment and acknowledgement of the challenges you're having. And this is this honest assessment is happening with your board, it's happening with your staff and probably some of your top stakeholders as well. Looking at what's really going on here. Where are we falling short? Is it a financial issue? Is it a leadership issue? Is our mission just not resonating with the community anymore? Like what exactly is it that's causing this? And then secondly, taking that information and considering what kind of strategic restructuring you might want to do to be able to focus on the ultimate outcome that you set out to achieve when you started the organization. If you wanted to end hunger and hunger is basically ended in your city, cool, great job. What do you want to do now? Do you want to tackle something else or is it job well done, going to go home or retire now? And third, just like in the phase before this, having that clear, transparent communication with your key stakeholders is important too, because if you are going to turn things around, you're going to need their support. And that could look like time or money or just reputational support, putting in a good word for you with others. You're going to need their support to make that turnaround possible. The seventh and final phase of the nonprofit life cycle is rejuvenation or closure. So at this point, we are at the end of the line. You've rejuvenated or you have decided this is it we're closing our doors if you are rejuvenating your organization then you're looking at innovation you're looking at what are the new fresh things we have done or are going to do to revitalize this organization you're looking at how are we going to rebuild trust with any community members or stakeholders whose trust might have been damaged by the previous risk of our decline before. And you're also looking at the restructuring of the organization. Um, perhaps you already started on this restructuring in another phase. So this is where you're assessing how did it work. 
And let's say you decide that actually the best course of action at this phase for the organization is closure. How do you do that? You make sure that you are winding down the organization's operations in a responsible manner. So making sure the people that you're serving are clear on what's going on, that you've referred them to other resources that might fill the gap if they're gonna be missing services because of your closure. Um, making sure that you've set up another nonprofit to receive any remaining funding in your bank account, because if a nonprofit closes, they can't just give the money to their staff or stakeholders. They have to, um, they have to give it to another nonprofit. It's not, it's not like a business where you sell a business and now you have profit. The community owns the nonprofit. So, um, secondly, communication again, always communication with your stakeholders, letting them know that the organization will be closing, providing the timeline for that closing, and then making sure that you're really reflecting with your team on lessons learned. Document those, share those with other nonprofits. Let your closure be something that serves other nonprofits to help them um, either avoid or also close responsibly too. All right, I'd love to hear from you. What stage of the nonprofit life cycle is your organization in? And how do you know? Share in the comments below. As I mentioned before, I have a newsletter. You can find the link below where I send out social impact tips and sometimes funding opportunities that might help you out. Definitely subscribe to that. Also on my website, foundertofulltime.com, I have some online courses and resources for starting a nonprofit. So those of you in that startup or growth phase might benefit from this and also developing a strategic fundraising plan, a course on that as well. Um, I also, <laughs> one more thing, I also have a group on Facebook called Change the World or Bust where we have thousands of people in there from around the world trying to make an impact and I'd love to see you join us there as well. I'm Amber Melanie Smith. I hope that this was interesting and educational for you and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.